In this module, we will learn about how to tune the rack specific environment. And the way that we're going to do that is that we're going to use Oracle's Enterprise Manager and we're going to look at the rack needs, not necessarily the database needs. I'm going to come over here, do an Alt tab, and I have Oracle's Enterprise Manager already up and running. If we come into the Performance tab, the Performance tab is going to tell us specific information as far as how the database is performing. But please understand that the rack environment encompasses more than just a database. It encompasses the database, networking, shared I.O., as well as other CPU and memory related requirements. So if we look at this from the database perspective, it says this is the cluster host load average, and we give the minimum, the average, and the maximum. Here we look for the global cache latency. In a clustered environment, we would have two separate servers sharing a common set of disks. Well, what's going to happen is one particular server may actually own the data. So if I go in there and I request data on server one, then server one is going to own that data. If server two comes in and they request that information, they actually have to go over to server one and say, hey, I would like to have this information from you. So this latency here identifies how long it takes from server two to request that information from server one. And what we're looking at is a very, very low latency. And see, so we see right here, we have some pretty low latencies. Over here, our latencies are a little bit high, and typically that's going to do with the system starting up the very first time. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here just a little bit. I'm going to look at the latency for single block reads and things like I.O. per second. Now, again, this is more dealing with the database-related performance. I'm going to look at the throughput here, and this is just dealing with the regular I.O. I can look, are there any sort of parallel executions going on? and I have my parallel min servers, my parallel max servers, really, really good information that's provided here. I can come over here and I can look at the services. Services is basically the service that you're going to connect to in a clustered environment. In a clustered environment, the default service will always be the database name, but you can give it additional services. So let's say that your clustered environment works with an HR program and a GL program, all using the same database. And all you're doing is just renaming or giving a synonym, if you will, for that database. Now I would connect to the GL service or the HR service. And those specific services can be associated to specific nodes. So let's say you have a four node rack and you want to isolate two of those nodes to the HR service and the other two nodes to the GL service. So you can create a service that's just going to point to those specific nodes. And this right here is going to tell me what the overall performance is of a given service. And you can see we already have that. Here we have an HR service, and we also have the Oracle service. And if I look at the instances, the instances is going to break it down. If I come over here, what is the overall memory or active sessions per instance? So ORCL1 has this number of active sessions, and ORCL2 has this number of active sessions. And this is very important because it will show you the actual load per server. And there are going to be many times that one particular server may be overloaded than another particular server. If that's the case, there are certain things that you can adjust to kind of help balance out the load. The way that this performance all operates is that a connection is going to come in through what's referred to as the listener scan. And this is a new feature in the Oracle 11 environment. It kind of operates as like a DNS server. So when you establish a connection, you're actually going to connect to the scan address. The scan address will then route the connection request to an available listener, and the listener is then going to route it to an available server. So you got a couple of different hops going on in there that you don't really have any control as far as who is it being associated to or who is connecting to a specific server. So if you can see that one server is actually a little bit overloaded than another, you can change things around and kind of redirect them to point to a specific server. We'll also look at things like cluster cache coherency. This is very, very important here. We're looking at the global cache access latency, which we saw from the other screen. But we also look at the global cache transfer rate and the global cache block transfer rate versus physical reads and logical reads. And these things here are highly, highly important. This is telling you how fast the blocks are being transferred. And this is telling you how many times I'm actually reading from disk versus memory. Let's take a look at these a little bit closer. This one right here, the latency, is telling you how long server 2 is waiting from the request from server 1. This one is telling you how fast the transfer is occurring. 
And this one is telling you how many reads you're making from physical disk or from memory. All very, very important things. Then if I scroll down here a little bit more, I can see the active session history. And then see this little window here, if I want to scroll this over, you can see I can scroll it to the spikes. And down here under top SQL, this would tell you the SQL that would be running during that time frame. So if I move this over here to this window, and now I'm going to go ahead and scroll down, we still see these spikes, but there's no SQL occurring, which is very, very useful to know as well. So this is telling you that, hey, you just have memory issues going on. Maybe there's some sort of memory leak. I'm not really sure. Or maybe there's just block transfers going on. So those are certain things that you'd have to investigate. In this particular system, there's not a lot of activity. But in the real world, you would see these things spiking up. And then you can just drag this over and you can look at the SQL statement. And then the really cool thing about that is that you can identify the SQL statement and then run it through either a SQL tuning advisor or a SQL access advisor. From a database perspective, we're going to have you come into Enterprise Manager, go to the Performance tab. And then under the Performance tab, we're going to look at things like the access latency. The next thing that you need to do is to come down here and look at the cluster cache coherency. Again, you're going to get the latency, but now you're going to get the block transfer rate as well as the physical reads versus the logical reads. Very, very important. If you see these things spiking, what you might want to do is investigate what your I.O. rate is, maybe move some data around to some faster disks, or maybe tune your network. If you have memory related issues, then what you can do is you can tune a specific instance to help improve memory related issues as well. The other thing to understand would be things like the interconnects, and this is network related things. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. To look at your network related performance information, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the cluster tab. And on the cluster tab, I'm going to come over here to interconnects. And under the interconnects, I can see that I have performance related information by each individual NIT card for each individual node. So for rack one, I can see what the total I.O. rate is. And for rack two, by NIT card and subnet address, I can see what that total I.O. rate is. We're looking here for total I.O. rate or total error rate to be as close to zero as we can get. That's telling us the network is running just fine. Now we scroll down here, and this is going to be the interfaces that are currently in use and what their transfer rate is. Now again, we see for node one, NIT card one, the transfer rate is 0 0.006. And for ORCL2, NIC1, the transfer rate is 0 0.00022. Basically, this is kind of telling me that this particular NIC card is not being utilized very often. So what I might want to do is investigate why people are not connecting to ORCL2. And it could be it just has to do with the load. It has to do with activity. In this particular case, on my particular server, my enterprise manager is actually on node 1. So that's why node 1 is a little bit more in use than node 2. But from a performance perspective, you will want to also tune your network environment. As the DBA, you may or may not have the ability to do this. If you notice that you are having some latency here, then you need to contact your network administrator. The other thing that we would look at is the private interconnect transfer rate, and this is rack wide, and it's going to give you this information every five minutes. So it's really twofold. Number one, at the database level, we're going to look at the latency, the transfer rate, and the physical reads and physical writes. And at the cluster level, we're going to look at things like the private interconnect transfer rate, as well as the total error rate and the I.O. rate as well for each particular NIC card.